dear friends welcome to the today's daily dose i am myself dr rajesh guba i am a cardiologist i am also the mentor for teaching general medicine in exams like neat pg aims pga and as well as jipma so as a part of today's daily dose the question is lupus anticoagulant is associated with all except recurrent abortions polyhydramnias intrauterine growth retardation preeclampsia of early onset now lupus anticoagulant so this is the antibody which is associated with the apla syndrome that is anti phospholipid antibody syndrome anti phospholipid antibody syndrome it is one of the hypercoagulable disorders and in general population the incidence is nearly around 5% whereas if you take in patients with sle the incidence of apla syndrome in patients with sle is around 50% now which of the following is not the feature associated with your apla syndrome or lupus anticoagulant so because it is being a hypercoagulable disorder there is high chance of the uterine artery thrombosis and that is the reason why the individual can have recurrent abortions intrauterine growth retardations and there can be also preeclampsia of early onset the one which is not associated with the lupus anticoagulant is the polyhydramnias and to talk more about the anti phospholipid antibody syndrome apla antibodies or often often take my point often but not always associated with the obstetric outcomes and what are those op that obstetric outcomes they include the first trimester miscarriage mid and later fetal loss and intrauterine death and they can also have stillbirth now out of all these the very important multiple choice question is this important point the risk of pregnancy loss is greatest during the mid trimester in apla syndrome so this is a very very important multiple choice question that you need to remember then what is the criteria for apla in pregnancy so the diagnostic criteria there are three important diagnostic criteria if anything of this if it fits then we can diagnose that the female is suffering with apla syndrome number 1 there should be unexplained death of morphologically normal fetus and during which week of pregnancy at or beyond 10th week of gestation so at or beyond 10th week of gestation if there is an unexplained death in morphologically normal fetus think of apla syndrome and how can you make out that the fetus is morphologically normal you have to document it by ultrasound or direct examination of the fetus that is one of the diagnostic criteria the second important diagnostic criteria for the apla syndrome is three or more unexplained consecutive spontaneous abortions before 10th week of gestation with maternal anatomic or hormonal abnormality and paternal and maternal chromosomal causes being excluded so all the causes are excluded there is no maternal anatomical abnormality there is no maternal hormonal abnormality there is no paternal and maternal chromosomal abnormalities also have been completely ruled out after excluding all these causes if the female has three or more unexplained consecutive spontaneous abortions before 10th week think of apla syndrome and the next important diagnostic criteria is that there should be at least one premature birth of a morphologically normal neonate before 34th week of gestation due to eclampsia or severe preeclampsia according to the standard definitions or recognized features of the placental insufficiency right so here the week which is taken into consideration is 34th week of gestation and there should be at least one premature birth of morphologically normal neonate okay so three weeks i mean in the sense three durations have to be taken in the first criteria it is at or beyond 10th week of gestation unexplained death morphologically normal fetus 
Second criteria, three or more unexplained consecutive abortions before 10th week, all the causes have been excluded. And the third criteria, at least one premature birth of a morphologically normal unit before 34th week of gestation due to preeclampsia or severe eclampsia. So if any one of this is there in the female, then you have to think of APLA syndrome. And there are some more important multiple choice questions related to your SLE. If the question is asked, what is the most common presentation of SLE, right? And if you see most of the students, they go with the mala rash, the skin manifestation. Let me tell you, skin manifestation is not the most common presentation of SLE. The most common presentation in SLE is your arthralgia or myalgia that is present in almost 90% of patients. So that is a very, very important point. And the type of arthritis what you will have in patients with SLE is non-erosive arthritis that is seen in almost 60% of individuals. And what is the most common hematological presentation? Most common hematological presentation in patients with systemic lupus erythematosus is normocytic normochromic type of anemia. And most common neurological complication if the question is asked, then the answer is the cognitive disorder is the most common neurological complication or neurological presentation. And finally, if the question is asked, what is the most common cardiopulmonary presentation in patients with SLE, then think of pleurisy, but not Lidman Sachs endocarditis. So this is a very, very important point. And the very peculiar point about the Lidman Sachs endocarditis is that Lidman Sachs endocarditis is one of the clinical scenario in SLE where we don't give steroids. And what is the treatment for your Lidman Sachs endocarditis? It is your valvuloplasty. Valvuloplasty is the treatment of choice in patients with the Lidman Sachs endocarditis. We don't give steroids. So this question is completely about your APLA syndrome and as well as some of the most common presentations in patients with SLE. And all the three diagnostic criteria have to remember about the APLA syndrome. And the chances of your APLA syndrome in patients with SLE is nearly around 50%. So thank you very much. I hope you might have liked this particular short video on this APLA syndrome and most common presentations in SLE. So please do follow us on the daily dose for the daily updates. Thank you very much.